when when there was a change in driver from Dale to Alex, I think we both sensed that there was a sense of ownership. I don't know in how you led the team, like you you had the full reins. Yeah. At that point, is that true? Yeah, that's 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 true. I mean, you know, obviously when you're building a team, uh, like I, I I feel like I did when I first came over to Junior Motorsports, was able to handpick and get guys and and kind of set your own uh, tempo and same as way Chad sets the tone. You know, I know Jimmy, uh, I was a, a great leader for the 48 and and inspired these guys to work hard. But you know, Chad set the tone on how he did things and. You know, when Alex came along, uh, you know, Dale and I worked great together. And um, but I always felt like I came into Dale's team and yeah. and, and needed to uh, prove, prove, you know, and, and, and continue on the success that he had. And, and when Alex came along, I, I, I saw it as another chase. Right. Where Chase needed, you know, when he came in as a rookie. And I know Alex, well, he might have been a three-time rookie at that point. Right, right. right. <laughs> um, when, when Chase, he, he just wanted somebody that believed in him and didn't question his ability and, and get the team wrapped around it. And, and that whole time, you're, I was trying to build the driver and, and Alex at the point of, at some point, it's going to be Alex's team. It's not going to be mine. And that's, that's, the, that's my goal with this now 48 team. And that was my goal with the nine team of at some point, if I'm not in this team, it's going to function because, Man. you know, Chase is going to be the leader. Alex is going to be the leader just like Dale was and Jeff Gordon and that all the great drivers. I, I like, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but I will, I will add to, there was a moment when I was hurt in 2016 and I went to Phoenix, and Alex was qualifying the car. Mm. I hadn't really been around the racetrack much at the, up to, to that point. I walk out on pit road, and I put on a headset, and I, the whole vibe and tone and conversation of the team was completely different than what it was like when it was me and you and when I was driving the car. And basically, Alex hopped in the car, and you said, I did this, this, and this, and this. It's going to go around the corner. You just go down and drive it. Alex gets in the car, goes out there, runs. It was, I think, back then they had three round qualifying yep, or something. Three rounds. Car comes in. All right, Alex, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z. Okay, I'll go. I'm gonna go out there and run. Alex goes out and runs second round. It's third round. All right, Alex. All right, Alex, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. Okay, you got it. I'm gonna, and Alex just was like bought in, out on the track, and I think you guys qualified on the pole. On the pole. And I was sitting there watching that, and I thought to myself right away it was apparent like this like I might have I don't you know I don't know if I'm gonna run the next year or not or what my future looks like I don't have that in my mind right then but I knew that like your future was with a younger driver who would listen to you and buy in I was critical if yeah. you said I'm gonna do this I'd be like eh! I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why that's not gonna work, and 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 man, I don't know, and I don't believe, I don't, I, I, you know, I just older drivers get to a point to where they listen less, they buy in less, they 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 think that they have ha all, you know all the same answers that you have, and they butt heads with the with the crew chief, whoever that guy is, right? Yep. And it's rare when that doesn't happen, but most times. Uh, I feel like that I should have – I wish that if I could do it all over again that I would shut up and just say, yes, we're doing what you want to do and let you go and let you learn. If, if Knowing what I know now, it would have been better off if I would have just bought in every weekend instead of trying to either in, in my own way help you figure this thing out or trying to tell you how I would do it or what I would do, or how I would strategize, or how I would prepare, or what shock I would run, or what I would do to you know to the to the car. Um, I was I was filling your head full of unnecessary, you know, ideas and information, and and steer. You know, you would you would be going down this way, and I'd go no 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 no. You know, don't believe in that. Yeah. Right. And you'd be like, yeah, but this is what my mind. This is what. This is what all this is telling me to do, right? This is everything that I've learned is telling me to go this way. And I'm like, no, no, don't believe in that. Go this way. This is the way. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> when Alex hops in the car, 
He's like, whatever you say, and you are you were so content and like, man, it's so nice to have a guy just get in there and just do it, right? Just not not try to tell me why it's not going to work or why I don't need to do that and do this. Yeah, I, I remember that conversation afterwards, too, because I think it was with, like, brake valves or something. I told Alex, okay, we're going to adjust this, and I need you to move that one click. You got Nothing. it. Got it. And – I would have been like, why? Why do I want to do that? (laughs) I want to move two clicks. We talked about this. We're going to move two clicks. We're not doing it that way. It's almost like (laughs) I needed a rookie driver every week, you know? Like, that's how my mind worked. You had had this with Chase, right? And then when you came to work with me, I made it very frustrating, right? Because you you had to sift everything, every idea through me. Or you just didn't even, you'd probably better off not even tell me. Yeah. So you didn't have to deal with the argument. But then, you know, I knew it. When I saw that at Phoenix, I thought, man, whatever it is, you know, I want to – I came back and I ran a year. We had a – we had it was a rough year company-wide. It wasn't like yeah. anything we were doing wrong. Um, and I'll say, too, I know this – you're the guest, and I'm supposed to, you're supposed to be doing the talking, but I'll say even though that was a frustrating year from a performance standpoint, the morale and the attitude and the personality, you were a big part of that. Like, if you don't do what you do, yeah. that whole thing sort of implodes and gets worse and gets harder to get better, right, when, when whoever comes in behind me. But you were, a big, you were a big part of keeping the team's morale up and, uh, and, and knowing, you know, that we had a year to finish. This was my final year. I, I kept telling you all, like, man, you know, I know things aren't going well, but I'm not going to get pissed off about this i'm gonna this is it i'm gonna try to enjoy this and we're gonna go to the racetrack and race and alice is coming in behind me and that's this thing for you guys to look forward to um and i really appreciate that i appreciate how um that year that last year could have been much more difficult uh but i think you were a key player in making sure it didn't go there yeah, I think that goes along with, you know, your leadership of the team because you and I had a pretty honest conversation about this. Yeah. Um, I remember qualifying one time, and we didn't qualify so well at the 600 the year before. I remember driving to your house, and we were sitting on the couch. It's like 1 o'clock at night, and we had an honest conversation then, and then we had an honest conversation going into 2000, the, the final year. And I think – we set the tone for that. You know, if we weren't on the same page, I felt like it definitely could have went the wrong way. And uh, you always had my back and I always had yours. And, and you know, I think the leadership showed because the guys were always ready to go the next week. So it was uh, – it, it helped me grow um, in, in as, as a crew chief and as a leader because not every uh, race season, not every race, not every uh, – Every time we go to the racetrack is going to be easy and fun, but yeah. um, you know you want it. We set goals out there of just you know being competitive and running all the laps, and, and at the end of the day, you know staying on the same team. You know. Yeah. Can I ask this? Uh, you know, I can't help but hear when Dale explains that whole uh, experience. It sounds like that would have been miserable for you, but I know he's being harsh on himself as far as you know the way he would apply feedback when he called you. I think. Greg was the first person you called when you had made a decision yeah. to retire. I don't. I think you even called him before you called your mom. Do you remember that phone call? I do. And what was, what what was your reaction to hearing that he was really going to retire? You know, initially you put some of the <clears throat> um, burden on yourself or responsibility. To to me, I felt like as a crew chief, I was supposed to, uh, you know, protect him and. and and not make certain decisions to put them in, in harm's way. Right. And I think one of the crashes, I, I made the decision to take two tires or four tires and kind of put us back at, at Michigan. And ultimately we got in, in a crash. So, you know, I feel at, at that point, I felt some responsibility mm-hmm. for it. So, which, you know, at, you know, that's, that's what comes with racing is, and, and that's what makes great leaders great is that they, they put the responsibility and burden on themselves. And, um, you know, it was, it was tough for me to, to hear, and I appreciated, you know, him having that conversation with me, but, um, ultimately it, it was an understandable decision, you know, so. 
you talk about the first phone call was to Greg. I remember he was the first person I called when I was dealing with some vision issues in the middle of 2016. Uh, mm. I remember standing in the garage area at Kentucky looking at the scoreboard. I have always had like 20-20 vision, 20-10, and uh, super good. Like I've you know, just you know, used to – I don't anymore. It's awful. But uh, I used to brag about it and go get my exam, come back and be like, yeah, buddy, it's still awesome. See like a beagle. Hell yeah. I, I remember it. I'm standing there <laughs> in the garage area with, uh, with a, a few folks, and I'm looking at the scoreboard, and I'm like, is the scoreboard blurry to you guys? It's like way over in turn one, right? And I'm like, I usually see pretty clearly, but it's blurry. Is it the heat or what's going on? Is it blurry? Because of the heat, right, Come rising off yep. everything? It was 100 freaking degrees in Kentucky every year. They're like, nah, it's not blurry. I'm like, uh -oh. man, what's going on? And I went to the – I went in the bus and I called Jimmy. And I said, Jimmy, I'm – got something going on. I went and sit, went and sat down and talked to him. And he said, I, I, we both start determined we thought it might be allergies, right? Yep. Anyhow, a couple weeks goes by and we're getting ready to go to New Hampshire, I think, to race. And I called Greg and I said, Greg, I said, I got this stuff going on. And I told him all the symptoms. And I said, I don't know what that means. And I don't know why it's happening. And the last wreck was a month ago, well, you know, a month and a half ago, I was like, it, this doesn't seem like concussions, but it's getting worse every other, you know, every day or so is getting worse and worse. And I don't really know if I can race this weekend. Like I'm worried that if I, it's Monday and, and I'm worried that by maybe Sunday, I might have to say in this final hour, I might have to break the news to you guys and go, I can't race. What are we going to do now? Right here, right here in front of the whole world. And he, and he, uh, He's like, I don't know. Uh, I was like, I think we need to get a driver on standby. And he's like, okay, 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 okay. I was like, um, yeah, we'll get Alex. We'll get Alex and have him. And we're not, you know, like we're planning this ourselves. Like, yeah. It's the dumbest plan ever. <laughs> and I don't know if it was you at the end of the conversation that told me to talk to Rick. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> did you call Rick yet? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you should probably call Rick. And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. I call Rick and Rick's like, Get your ass to the hospital. Get get your freaking head checked out. What the hell are you talking about? We're yeah. not going to the track like some <laughs> patchwork plan. Quit going to Jimmy for your diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> well, so in the driver's meeting, you mentioned that you had some allergies going on in the, at Kentucky. And, you know, I was, you know, concerned. And Kentucky... I've never had allergies in my life. Yeah. So, so is, and, and I didn't know that. I was reaching. So, um, but... Kentucky, obviously not a very good track for Hendrick Motorsports or us at the time. And I think we were passing Denny for seventh. And you went down on the apron at the start-finish line, and you hit oh that God, bump. Oh, my God, yes. And we were like, we we're like, yeah, we're, we're going forward, car's fast. Yeah. Dale's getting in his groove, you know. And you hit that bump, and I think we went back to 17th. That's right. You passed him for seventh, and a couple laps were – back to 17th and I was like you know there's something going on so yeah um I know you got out of the car concerned but we didn't really talk about it and I don't know if Loudon was the next race or not I felt like it was yeah it was the next race and you called me and and that's when I was standing at the top of my driveway pacing you know trying to come develop this plan. great plan we had going on <laughs> and you know I, I called Alex right after that I was like hey Alex uh, uh Dale needs a, you know, wants to make sure he has a backup driver just in case anything happens. Like, he's like, for this weekend? I'm like, no, no, not 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 for this weekend. Just for any time, you know, we, we never really had that. And so yeah. I convinced him to come in and uh, he sat in the car and I was like, you need any changes? He's like, nope, this is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, that's pretty good. So now I, he's probably pretty critical. Yeah, no, not not <laughs> not really, but yeah. uh, now but, that he's learned all yeah. of the oh, oh. all of the things that he can change. He's probably like, yeah. I need to move to 16. Right. Though. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, and and obviously he he had uh, no love lost for New Hampshire, but nah. uh, he got in there and did a great job. He so. did. He did. I remember Greg just being with you every step of the way. Like, you know, you started yeah, going yeah, to yeah. Pittsburgh, and, and I thought – I didn't know if that was unusual or not. And I don't even know what you thought about it because – Well – but, but, like, he would go with you. It wasn't unusual. So, when – so, with with Steve, I had developed this amazing friendship. And I had it with Tony Sr. and Tony Jr. We're family, obviously, right? So, 
even with Lance, it was important that we had off track time together and he'd come Lance would come to the house if I was going to hang out and drink beer uh, Lance would I'd call him and he might come right I always felt like that the only way we were going to have each other's back was that we really truly had to be friends we had to have a a real sense of we had to care for each other right and want the best for each other and wonder what's going on in our personal lives and want that to be good right and I think that you know when we started when we got together I said hey don't know if you're down, but we're going to become friends. All right? <laughs> you got a new. You're going to get a new buddy here. Yeah, and um, hope you're interested in that. We got that's, one. <laughs> you know, that's going to be part of this relationship. It yep. has to. I have to have that trust. That friendship trust, right, is real, really important. And uh, so when he was, you know, when his, so I would, you know, it was comfortable to call him because I could call him just like I was calling. Sonny or or one of my great friends mm. and going, man, I got a problem and I really don't know who else to talk to. Um, I could call him and know that he wasn't going to go run into into somebody's office or or go upstairs to Rick or or you know freak out right until it was time to freak out. And so, uh, yeah, him going to the, I wanted him to be there, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted him to know exactly what was happening so he could go back to the team and relay whatever information was necessary so that they weren't worried or questioning what was going on, and that he too knew like how far out this plan was happening, right? Uh, I think some of the things that I included you right out of the get-go yep. and didn't do that with Rick, yep. right? Completely forgot to share the same sort of uh, access for Rick. So for a couple months at least, I don't know how long it was, but like going when we got sidelined in 16 and I had to get out of the car, I wasn't call Rick wasn't going with me. I wasn't calling Rick and telling him what was happening. I was, you know, you were there because you were, you know, I did, I felt like I was letting him down, right? I felt like I was I was making this he's trying to get this build momentum, get this team stronger and stronger and I felt like I was pulling the batteries out of this thing, right? And yeah, so, and it, it goes back to what I said about responsibility on my part. Like him including me and me being part of it allowed me to get over that. Like it, <clears throat> it was just part of, you know, I, I learned more about your history of yeah, concussions, yeah, yeah. and and it wasn't just because of one decision I made yep. at at Michigan, right? So, it really helped me grow as you know part of of Dale and his history, but also um, you know understand the medical side of things and and that that all had a uh interest in my my head as well but if it didn't go that way uh, i think my path as a crew chief could have went differently um just because of like i said there there's great pressure on us as as a driver Mm -hmm. and 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 a crew chief combination that if you don't have that relationship uh, i think i could have went the wrong way and you know Mm. put more blame on myself i say this man I can't believe that you even felt. I can't. I'm. For, this is the first time I'm hearing that you had any of those emotions. I don't. I can't believe that you had those emotions. Like I never. I'll just say if this helps at all. I don't know, but I never look back at any of my history and and pinpoint specific things that put me in any situation. You know, if I look at a race and and go to my notes and say, okay, I wrecked at Bristol. Um, I ran into Denny Hamlin uh, as he careened off the inside wall. Uh, and what put me in that? What put me in third? You know, how did I get there? Well, let's go back to the, you know, yeah. I don't, do, I never did that. I never, I never walked out of that racetrack going, man, I wish Greg wouldn't have done X, Y, or Z. Never crossed my mind. Yeah. You know, I, and, and I know that, I know that you've, you know, look at it differently and you say, man, I wish I wouldn't have maybe done X, Y, and Z, but I never thought about it. Never yeah. crossed my mind one time mm. to to go, I wish I hadn't have looked, I wish I wouldn't have been on the outside of that guy, or yeah. I wish I would have done a better job on the restart, uh, you know, to, to not be in that position. I never, never thought of it. So, like I said, if if I wasn't part of that going to Pittsburgh or part of the solving the problem that was created, um, you know, I think it could have been a little different aspect for me. I think you were looking for people to believe you too at the same time, and I, yeah, I think you, yeah. I think you, you sort of hinted at it uh, a few minutes ago. Is that you wanted your team, you you cared about what your team thought, but I, 
is I remember kind of none of us really knew what the heck he was talking about. He, you know what he'd do? He'd do this thing where it'd be like, in, you'd be in my office and he'd be like, well, did you just feel that? Like, did you, like right there, everything got, that got dizzy. And I would just be like, what the heck is he talking about? Like, I, I mean, honestly, if you don't want to race, just don't race or something. Yeah. Like, I mean, wh- wh- why are we going through these theatrics? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, and and I listen. I feel awful being being that uh, it's uh, that fair. honest. But it's but like fair. I know yeah. when you wrote the book and and I think that you were going through. You needed people to believe you. And and I still I kind of feel guilty that at first we we needed convincing. In fact, it I, was Mickey Collins that actually yeah. with the moment when we realized. Oh, yeah. Like if if Dale is coming up with these things. It's about to get exposed right here with Mickey Collins, his doctor. And you were in the in the room with us all, and, and we we're all sitting there. And Mickey Collins' response was, "You should have been here a long time ago." You want to hear the rest of that conversation with Greg Ives? Well, you can. You can listen to the entire Dale Jr. download on all major podcast platforms.